Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lecture of 19 SCPHYU301. Previously, we have discussed the first chapter complex numbers. From this video lecture, we will start the discussion on second chapter which is partial differentiation and this is the reference book that I am primarily using to prepare these videos. This is the lecture plan for this lecture. We will first quickly have an introduction with what partial differentiations are. We will formally define what partial differentiation are in comparison with ordinary differentiation. Then we will consider a few uh, examples of higher order partial differentiation and then we'll quickly see the notations that we will be using for this chapter. Before we begin the discussion on partial differentiation, it is important to realize that there may be functions with multiple independent variables and these functions can arise very naturally. As an example, we will consider these four cases. The first one is electrostatic potential. Suppose we have a charge distribution which is fixed in time, which is not a function of time. For this charge distribution which is independent of time, the potential is independent of time. It will not change with time. But of course, since the space is three dimensional, electric potential is a function of x, y and z. At every point in space, the potential will be different and therefore we have to know what is x, y and z to find out electrostatic potential at that particular point. It is static because it is not changing with time. And here what we have is a scalar function, a function which is function of three variables x, y and z. So this is going to be a multivariable function with three independent variables. Similarly, if we consider the second case now, the case of electrodynamic potential, suppose the charge distribution that we were considering in the first case is a function of time now, it depends on time, then naturally the potential due to the charge distribution will change with time, it will now be a function of time and of course it is going to be a function of space. So this electrodynamic potential, now dynamic because it is changing with time, so this electrodynamic potential now is a function of four variables x, y, z and t where each of these variables are independent of each other and therefore this again is a multivariable function with four independent variables. Now let's consider the third case of static electric field. Again static electric field is produced when we have a charge distribution which is independent of time which is not changing with time. But what is the difference with electrostatic potential? The difference now is this electric field is a vector quantity and it is going to have the three components Ex, Ey and Ez. To obtain this vector E, we have to multiply each of these components by the three unit vectors I, J and K. Now for a static electric field, each of these components Ex, Ey and Ez, they will of course be a function of space. The electric field will change at different points and therefore all these components now are functions of x, y and z, the three coordinates and therefore each of these Ex, Ey and Ez now are the scalar functions which depend on three independent variables x, y and z. This Ez will also depend on the three variables. So in this way, when we consider static electric field, it is now consists of three different scalar functions. Each of them is a multivariable function with three variables with three independent variables. And now this dynamic electric field is straightforward. Suppose the charge distribution which is producing that electric field is changing with time. What will happen is this electric field will now be a function of four variables. It will depend of course on the coordinates and it will also depend on time because the charge distribution is dependent on time and this is going to be equal to Ex which is the x component and it is a scalar function and it is function of all the four variables in general plus Ey which is again a scalar, a scalar function 
which depends on these four variables and then you multiply it by the unit vector and the third component the z component is going to be ez which is function of x y z and t and it is multiplied by the unit vector k in this way there can be so many functions which are multivariable functions they depend on more than one variables and it will happen in all the fields of sciences and engineering it could be a scalar functions something like this or it could be a vector function a vector function simply means it will have more than one scalar functions in it now. Partial differentiation arises when we have a function which depends on more than one variable. So a function should have at least two variables if partial differentiation is to be defined for that function. Let's consider one example here. Let me consider a function which is function of three variables. A function of two variables of course can have partial differentiation. Here I am considering a function of three variables suppose this function is x square y raised to 4 into z so this is a function where x y and z are independent of each other and therefore it becomes a function of three variables this is important all these three variables x y and z they should be independent of each other if one of the variable depends on the others then you can write the function as the function of the variable on which the other variables depend and therefore they are not independent in this, that case. So here we are considering that x, y and z are independent of each other. They can assume values independent of what are the values to other two variables. Now you can define partial differentiations of this function. This function is going to have three different partial differentiation of first order. I can differentiate this function partially with respect to the first variable x and when I differentiate it with respect to x basically what I do is I keep y and z constants the other two variables constants and then by treating them as constant we have to differentiate it with respect to x and therefore in this case these two terms are independent of x and therefore what we will get as a partial differentiation is 2x into y raised to 4 into z so this is equal to or dou f by dou x partial differentiation of f with respect to x is going to be equal to 2 x y raised to 4 into z i can also differentiate this function partially with respect to y and for this partial differentiation now since we are differentiating it with respect to y x and z are constants and therefore the differentiation is going to be y x, sorry 4 x raised to 2 y cube into z so this is dou f by dou i partial differentiation of f with respect to y the third possibility for first order partial differentiation is dou f by dou z where we are differentiating this function f with respect to z and since we have to treat x and y as constant now it is going to be x raised to 2 into y raised to 4. So these are the three possibilities for first order partial differentiations of this function f. Many times it is written like this suppose I am differentiating the function partially with respect to x then it is written like this. What these two subscript here suggest is that the function is being differentiated with respect to x by treating y and z constants or by keeping y and z constants. We will drop these subscripts here. We will simply write it as dou f by dou x. Now you can see here that since I considered a function with three variables, I have three different first order partial differentiation similarly suppose i consider a function g which is function of only two variables how many partial differentiations would be there there would be two partial differentiation i can differentiate this g with respect to x by keeping y constants or the second possibility is i can differentiate this g with respect to y by keeping x constants and in general these two differentiations may not be same and in general this is true the first order partial differentiation 
of the same function when it is differentiated with respect to different variables they are not same in general in special cases that may happen but that is not true for all the functions now let's define partial differentiations formally for that let's first consider the ordinary differentiation when do we have ordinary differentiation whenever there is a function of a single variable then we define then we have the ordinary differentiation and how do we define it it is written like this df by dx f differentiated with respect to x and this is going this is defined as f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x where limit delta x is tending to 0 so delta x is not equal to 0 but it is tending to 0 so whenever we find out ordinary differentiation suppose I am trying to draw some abstract function here this is f this is x and when I find out the differentiation at some point x what I do is I consider a point which is f of x plus delta x a point which is somewhere here x plus delta x is now the x coordinate of the point I find out what is the value of the function at this point f of x plus delta x minus so this is f of x plus delta x then I subtract f of x from that this is f of x and then divide it by x plus delta x minus x and when we consider that this difference the difference between x and x plus delta x is tending to 0 when the limit is tending to 0 when the difference is very small then we can say that it is basically giving us a tangent to that particular function at the point x and this is now nothing but slope of that tangent this is y2 this is y1 this is x2 and this is x1 and therefore this equation when x is tending to 0 gives us the slope of that line slope of the tangent which is drawn to the function at that point in another way it gives us the rate with which the function is changing with x at that particular point now in the same way suppose i have a function which is function of two variables i'll consider a function with smallest number of possible variables there when there are two variables to the function then it can be differentiated partial now when i consider partial differentiation of this function with respect to x i have to treat y as a constant i keep y constant and therefore this is equal to it is it is very similar to the way we define the ordinary differentiation it is now f of x plus delta x y minus f of x y so we are changing value of x here but y is kept constant divided by delta y where sorry delta x where limit delta x is tending to 0 now in the same way when you differentiate this function partially with respect to y what is it going to be now now we have to keep x constant and therefore limit delta y would be tending to 0 f of x y plus delta y minus f of x y divided by delta y so this is how partial differentiations are defined by first principle the physical significance of do by do f by do x is same as ordinary differentiation this term at the given point x and y will give us rate with which this function changes at that point with x so this is equal to rate of change of f which is function of x and y with respect to x at the given point wherever we are finding out this differentiation dou f by dou x it will give us rate with which the function is changing at that point 
with respect to x and dou f by dou y is rate of change of the function at the same point but now it is rate with which the function changes with respect to y calculating higher order partial differentiations of a function is straightforward it is just like we find out the ordinary differentiations let's consider one example let me consider a function which is function of three variables which is equal to suppose this is x cube plus 4y square plus 5z raised to 4 and here x, y and z are independent of each other and therefore this is a function with three independent variables. Now how many first order differentiations are going to be there? There are going to be three first order partial differentiations. So let me write them here. First order differentiations of this function dou f by dou x partial differentiation of the function with respect to x is calculated by keeping y and z constant and therefore this is equal to 3x square dou f by dou y partial differentiation of function with respect to y is equal to 8 into y because we have to treat x and z as a constant and therefore these two terms will vanish similarly dou f by dou z is equal to it's now going to be 20 x cube so there are these three partial differentiations are possible for the given function how many second order differentiations are now possible let's check this dou f by dou x which is in general going to be a function of the three variables this dou f by dou x in general is going to be function of the variables on which the function depends function f depends and therefore i can now differentiate this f dou f by dou x with respect to x which will give us dou 2f by dou x2 so it is second order partial differentiations and we are differentiating f twice with respect to x so it will be differentiation of this now which is going to be equal to 6 x similarly we can differentiate this dou f by dou x which in general is going to be a function of x y z it is not a case for the simple function that i have considered but in general this dou f by dou x is going to be a function of x y and z when f depends on the three variables then if I differentiate this with respect to y, then this is written as dou 2f, dou y, dou x. This is equal to 0 because dou f by dou x is 3x square. And since we are differentiating with respect to y, there is no y dependence to dou, to dou f by dou x and therefore it is going to be 0. Similarly, I can differentiate this dou f by dou x with respect to z and this is written as dou 2f by dou z dou x. For this case, it is this also is 0 but in general they may not be 0 and in general they all are different. Is this the whole story? No, I have dou f by dou y as a first order differentiation of f with respect to y and I can differentiate that now with respect to x by keeping y and z constant this then is written as dou 2f by dou x dou y which in this case is 0 since dou f by dou y is 4, 8 into y it is independent of x dou by dou y of dou f by dou y so here i am again differentiating dou f by dou i with respect to y this is written as dou 2f into dou y2 this is equal to 8 and dou f by dou z can be differentiated with respect to sorry dou f by dou y can be differentiated with respect to z 
and this is written as do to f by do z2 which in this case is equal to 0 so these are the three second order partial differentiations that we have written the story is not yet complete we have this third partial differentiation do f by do z which is partial differentiation of f with respect to z and in general that is going to be a function of the three variables on which the function f depends and that function now can be differentiated partially with respect to x which is equal to do 2f by do x do z in this case it is going to be equal to 0 since do f by do this has to be z cube since do f by do z is 20 z cube it, is, it has to be 0 then do f by do z can be differentiated partially with respect to y which can be written as do 2 f by do y do z and next possibility is differentiation of this first order differentiation with respect to z which is going to be do 2 f by do z2 which is equal to 60 into z square so how many second order differentiations we have considered this is first this is second this is third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth and ninth now this particular example which i have chosen has only three of them as non-zero second order differentiations the first one then the fifth one and finally the ninth one but in general there could be all these second order partial differentiations which are different and they need not be zero now let's quickly see how these higher order partial differentiations are denoted let's consider this example of do 2f by do x do y what does this mean this means that i first differentiate f with respect to y partially and then differentiate the term partially with respect to x so this is how it is written another way it is denoted is like this f of y x of the function which depends on say the three variables z so here i am assuming that the function is function of three independent variables and this is how it is written this y here means that we are first differentiating the function with respect to y partially and then we are differentiating it with respect to x similarly suppose i have this differentiation do 3f do x do y do z what does that mean this means that we first differentiate f with respect to z then we differentiate that with respect to y and then finally we differentiate this with respect to x so this is now the third order differentiation in these notations of subscript it is written like this f of z y x note here the order in which these variables appear in this case they are in reverse order with which the function is being differentiated whereas in this case it is the correct order it is first differentiated with respect to z then with respect to the y and then with respect to x suppose i consider the first order of partial differentiation of the function which is function of the three variables how it is written how it is denoted in this subscript notation it is denoted as f of x of x y z now it should be very clear that why these subscript notations are important why they are convenient it is because they are shorthand in comparison with this do 3 f of do x do y do z this notation actually means the same thing but it takes very small space to write and time of course therefore these subscript notations are particularly useful when we are considering higher order differentiations let's now try to solve this counting problem suppose i have a function 
which is function of n number of variables x1, x2, x3, x4 and in this way there are n number of variables though I am using the same alphabet x actually these x1, x2, x3, x4 and up to xn they are independent variables so each of these x's they are independent of the other x and therefore this function now is a function of n number of variables let's try to find out how many first order partial differentiations are possible for this function first order partial differentiations can be denoted like this f of xi of x1 x2 x3 up to xn so this is how where this xi is one of these xn's so this is how it can be written and therefore how many such first order partial differentiations are possible this xi now can be any variable from these n number of variables and therefore you can randomly choose any variable here and therefore there are n number of first order partial differentiations for this function which is function of n number of variables how many second order partial differentiations would be there now second order partial differentiations in this shorthand notation can be written like this xi xj this means that we first differentiate this function which is function of n number of variables with respect to xi and then we differentiate it with respect to xj for this xi now there are n number of choices and for xj again there are n number of choices therefore for second order differentiation of this function of n number of variables now there are n square possibilities how many third order differentiations would be there this can be written as f xi xj xk where each of these x now can assume value from these n number of variables so for xi there are n possibilities for xj there are n number of possibilities and for xk there are n number of independent possibilities and therefore how many third order partial differentiations would be there there would be now n cube number of different third order partial differentiations possible for this function which is function of n number of variables and in this way suppose you are considering mth order partial differentiation of the function f which is function of n number of variables then how many possibilities would be there there would be now n raised to m number of possibilities keep in mind that all these m number of possibilities for mth order partial differentiation of this function which is function of n number of ind independent variables all these mth order partial differentiations can be different from each other in general and they may not be zero in this video now we have covered the basics of partial differentiations the second chapter and then we considered a few notations and finally we arrived at the conclusion on the last slide that if we have a function of n number of variables and if we are finding out mth order differentiation of this function mth order partial differentiations of this function then in general there are n raised to m number of possibilities and all these n raised to m number of partial differentiations can be different from each other and they may not be zero in next lecture we will consider the concept of total difference and we'll consider a couple of applications on this that's all for this video thank you for watching